Hi guys, I'm Tom, the tech chap, and this is another one of those, oh, it's not good, uh, <laughs> what's in my bag videos. I say another one, this is the first one I've ever done. So I'm gonna run you through the kit I use, what's in my bag essentially, why I use it, how much it all costs, and if you are interested in any of this stuff, I'll put links to all of it in the description below. So let's start with, well, the most obvious thing on this setup, setup, bag, whatever you wanna call it, and that is this travel tripod. I need something that's lightweight and that's small. This is 50 centimeters. It's about, it's like exactly the same height as my bag, which is super convenient. I don't have to think, oh, can I be bothered taking a tripod because it's just not that much of an inconvenience. And it does add a lot of flexibility for my shooting. So it's by KNF Concept. It costs about 100 quid and it also weighs just 1.5 kilograms, which is about a kilogram less than my normal tripod. So as you can see, it folds up really small or you can bring it down like so. It's also got this quite nifty ball joint, which means I can actually rotate the uh, head itself 90 degrees so I can actually get uh, bird's eye sort of vertical shots, which is quite handy. So the tripod umbrella goes on the side of my North Face Borealis uh, backpack. It's nothing special, this is about 50 quid. It's got three big, uh, sort of compartments. You can hold up to 28 liters, 15 inch laptop. You can spend four or five times more if you want on a fancy backpack with lots of nice little neat compartments uh, if you want, but this will do me. First of all, the laptop. And this is my pretty much everyday laptop. When I'm not using my desktop at home, I'm using this and it fits inside a 13 inch laptop sleeve. It's all about that sort of portability and compactness. Compactivity, compactness, compacted. So the laptop I use is Dell XPS 15. Why? Because it is a 15 inch laptop with super thin bezels, as I'm sure you've seen before, which means it actually fits inside a kind of like a 13 and a half, 14 inch chassis. So it's nice and compact, easy to use on the train. I can use it on like those tray tables, just about on a plane as well in economy seating. So that's handy if I'm editing on the way back. But not only is it portable, it's powerful. I can edit my 4K video on this. Struggles a bit with 4K 60 footage or lots and lots of 4K footage, but it does the job. And while I am looking forward to what Dell comes out with this year, the two in one isn't really for me. I want power, so I'm gonna wait for the uh, proper notebook refresh coming later in the year. But for now, this does everything I need and I still highly recommend it. Quite expensive at around 1600 quid. Still about a grand less than the MacBook Pro for a similar spec. I guess it's a little heavy for a travel laptop. It's two kilograms, but I also need that power and that performance to edit the 4K video I shoot. Now let's move on to the good stuff, the cameras. Lots of nice goodies in here. So let's start with the camera, the Panasonic GH5, which honestly, I love, I love this thing. Combined with the uh, Panasonic 12 to 35 lens, you get some of the best stabilization you can get on any camera right now. You've got uh, IS built into the lens and IS built into the body. All works together to produce some really, really crisp, beautiful looking and super smooth video. And that sort of capability to be able to handheld shoot footage, 4K footage, up to 4K 60 or even 180 FPS at full HD so you can get nice slow motion. Or if you want 4K 60 and half the speed down to 30, you get 4K slow-mo. So loads of flexibility in terms of what you can shoot, fully articulating screen. Uh, you can get two SD cards in here. If I do want an extra level of stabilization, I'll mount this onto the Zoom Crane gimbal, which I also use sometimes, and that's just almost like DJI Ronin quality of stabilization, but for way less money. So it's really handy that you can see what you're shooting, but from a distance, this screen is quite small. It's also not very color accurate. So recently I invested in one of these. It is a small HD focus monitor and it's my best friend. This is the best thing ever. Plugs into the HDMI on your camera, assuming you've got one. And the fact that I'm not using the screen now saves battery on the camera, so it lasts longer. You can uh, look at the zebraing, waveforms, uh, focus peaking. You can uh, look at custom LUTs on here. You can customize it any which way you like. And if you're self-shooting, this is really handy. I haven't got a cameraman. I can't really afford one yet. Uh, so if you're gonna stick that on a tripod, put it a couple of meters away from you and then do a piece to camera like I did the other day with my XPS 15 two-in-one video, this is so helpful to see what you're actually shooting and also make sure it's color accurate and looks the best possible. So about 500 quid for this small HD monitor, highly, highly recommend it. And uh, it just makes shooting so much easier. 
So that's the video side of things, but let's move on to audio because if anything, audio is more important uh, than video quality. I think people can forgive kind of ropey video as long as the audio is good, not really the other way around. So two options, either the Rode VideoMic Pro shotgun mic, which has a little line in. Shotguns are great, shotgun mics that is. Uh, they're great if you're in the perfect studio conditions. I think you can get the best sound quality from these if you've got lovely acoustic paneling, no echo, uh, you know, really good controlled environments, or if you've got a group of people, this is probably the easiest way to uh, capture audio from that. But in my experience, you're either too far from it or the room is really echoey or there's loads of background noise, loads of ways that this can really reduce the quality of a shotgun mic's uh, audio input, which is why I use one of these, actually two of these. I'm using one right now, got one stuck in my back pocket. I use the Zoom H1 recorder. I can show you this little nice little bag I've got here. Uh, the Zoom H1 recorder, which you can actually just talk to like this and do voice over if you want, but combine that with a Sennheiser ME2 lavalier, basically lavalier is a fancy word for lapel mic. That's the one I've got in here. So as I talk closer to it, the audio gets even better. I'm in my like kitchen living room thing, really, really echoey, completely unusable audio in my opinion on the shotgun mic, but decent on this Sennheiser. And all you do is plug it into this uh, line in, three and a half mil line in port. The connection's a bit ropey, so I've got a little three and a half mil female to male adapter. Stick that in your back pocket or wherever you like. Uh, run that under the, your shirt or the uh, talent shirt and then sort of place it on their tie or jacket or on top of what they're wearing. And then you can record the audio onto here. It adds an extra minute to the edit because you then have to sync the audio with the video. But as long as you just make a loud noise or a loud clap before you start, you can sync that audio really, really easily in the edit. And that way you can walk away from the camera, you can turn around and face the other direction. You get basically the same audio quality doesn't work with shotgun mics. So for all round versatility, I really recommend this kind of setup. I actually have two of these in case I'm doing interviews or uh, need a back and forth or there's a couple of people in the scene. So that's the main stuff, but I've also got spare batteries, USB sticks, SD cards, backup hard drive, two terabyte expansion portable drive. That's what they want to, want to call it. Card reader and also a screen cleaning cloth. Also got a little bag of cables. Uh, Ethernet adapters, USB-C adapters, also a mouse, so I use a Razer Death Adder. Uh, also got this handy newer CN160 light. I'm gonna blind you now, which is uses the same batteries as the small HD focus monitor, which is really handy, so I can just take uh, two or three of those batteries and it powers everything. Portable, small, hot shoe mounts, so you can put it on top of your camera. So the camera is like 1600 quid, the lens is like 800 quid, the monitor's 500 quid, expensive, prosumer stuff, but you don't need all that. As Casey Neistat famously says, the best camera is the one you have on you at all times, and everyone's got a smartphone, and the cameras on smartphones are better than ever. The Pixel 2 I've got here, the Pixel 2 XL, has, in my opinion, the best camera on any smartphone right now. And while you can just actually shoot some stuff on this, combine that with a uh, gimbal, like this DJI Osmo, which costs about 200 pounds, pop the phone in there, and you get some beautiful stabilized footage from an excellent camera. You can shoot 4K 30. So if you're on a budget or as a secondary option, phone and gimbal, I definitely recommend. And in the front pocket, lots of exciting things like a pixel charger, camera battery charger, a laptop charger, and of course, also a gorilla pod in case I come across some gorillas. So that is pretty much it for what is in my bag. I hope that was useful. The real differences between that stuff and what I use in sort of my more controlled environments, like at home in a studio, is the lighting. Uh, these are a bit more versatile and they've got tripods and things so I can uh, move them about. Also the camera, um, don't ask why, I've got a second GH5 at the moment, that's a long story. Uh, and I've also got a 18 to 35 Sigma lens with a Metabones speed booster, which is a bit of a secondary option. It depends on uh, the video I'm shooting and the look and style I'm going for. But beyond that, I'm still using the same mic, same camera, and there's not much different. So the fact that I can fit that sort of quality of uh, kit into a backpack that doesn't weigh more than five kilograms, so I can walk around with it all day long without my back hurting too much. Alternatively, I could pack way more in and actually just 
make more of an effort to go to the gym and get stronger and not complain about it. So if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. As I say, I've also put links to all of this stuff, everything I've mentioned in the description if you want to go and check those out. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Do click that like and subscribe button, which I believe is here if you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.